Yes, y'all know the drill. Like and subscribe to the channel. Crump Talk episode 31. I got the homie Jay Slot. I got the homie Swag Crazy. Formerly known as Baby Solo. How y'all feeling, fellas? Feeling great. Feeling good. Feeling yeah, good. Man. I appreciate y'all, you know, supporting the, the platform, man. This is my first uh, in-person interview. You know, we in the Mecca Cali. Salute to the homie Riot. You know, we at his crib, man. A lot of dope shit going on, man. Last night was an epic night, but, you know, we're going to get some more crump history and, you know, hear these fellas' stories. So we're going to start off with the homie Jay Slaw. Jay Slaw, let him know, man. Introduce yourself. What's up with y'all, man? It's your boy Sky, a.k.a. Jay Slot, uh, formerly known as the old boy style ripper. And I think uh, Lil Street Bully, oh, boy Street, I think it was Lil Street Bully. But yeah, um, I'm from OC. I've been uh, dancing for, shoot, decade, for more than probably a decade. Um, uh, I would say uh, I'm second generation. Uh, I mean, if not second generation, I'll say beginning third, but I feel I'm second generation. Uh, I started dancing, uh, I want to say on the cusp of when they started the whole crumb shit. Um, I was in the Get Crumb DVD, me and my brother T Slot. Uh, we was actually the clowns they was battling. So, um, yeah, man, I've been doing this shit for a long time. Um, I love it. I'm just here to keep spreading the movement. And um, it's all I love. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Appreciate it. You know, it's like so crazy. Let them know, bro. In. You know, I learned crunk from just a lot of people, though. So when I came out here from Chicago, didn't have too much friends. So my homie, when I... I didn't really, really, truly learn crunk till I moved to Chino, though. So, I was hearing about certain shit when I was in West Covina, because CRU was popping. Everybody was wanted to be in CRU. People was like, claiming they was in CRU. Swear to God, I seen people say they was in, and then they wasn't in. That's how popping they was. And, but when I got to Chino, finally, I had homies that really was doing the shit. So, they was doing some clowning and stuff. So my homie had a cousin from LA and he would just come back here with information. Cause I never drove to LA. You get what I'm saying? So around this late gener uh, second generation, I was outside looking in. So when, I remember the times when it was like, when, when Stutter Boxing Book Wild was popping and shit like that. Like, uh, the boxing ring was that battle, battle nights, battle nights. So I'm outside of looking in. I came in with the fan approach, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's what led me to who I am, I guess, now. Right, right, right. So I've learned from Sabbath to Riot and then Solo. So that's pretty much my growth in crime. All right, all right. Jay Slot, so let everybody know how you, you know, first got into Crump, man. How did it like Crump spring onto you? Um, damn. Well, I, let's start how, let's start by saying I've always been a dancer. Um, I've always was like the, the Usher type. My favorite song was uh, My Way. And he, when he used to break, like do his little segments, what he do, the, the, chore, the choreograph shit. Mm -hmm. And that was me and my brother's shit. So just seeing that and then Michael Jackson and everybody just do their stuff, I've always been inspired to dance. Now, when I started clowning, um, I forgot where I was, but uh, we were uh, at the Boys and Girls Club and the homie was from LA and he was with, I forgot, I think he was with Tommy or somebody, or Get Him Up Clowns, his name is Skits. And he would come to the Boys and Girls Club and uh, he would show us like the hottest dances that was, was popping and it was clowning. So we was doing that for a minute and then uh, we was at this one club and um, we had seen Slayer and um, by this time, we had already was doing our clown and shit. Me, Riot, my brother, uh, Swings, Warrior. We was already clowning and, and, and popping off in the club and shit at, a, at an early age. Um, so I was at this club, it was called Rockin' Sushi in Tustin. Um, uh, Slayer, it was Slayer, Miho, and Lil C, they all came to the club. And then, uh, Long story short, uh, Slayer had like pu pulled us aside, me and my brother, and he started like, like, I guess prophesying to us, like, yo, y'all dancers, like, like, what do y'all do? Da, da, da. 
and he didn't know me from Adam and Eve. Like, he didn't know me at all. I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. He just knew we danced and he was starting talking to me and he was like, y'all should come to LA and dance. So shoot, one day we went to LA. Uh, it was a Debbie Allen studio called Battle Nights. They did a little dancing at Battle Nights. And then we seen Todd Eyes and we seen like his whole little crew. I'm like, damn, this is it right here. Like this is, this is like the, 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 the shit. Like these niggas are doing something different. So from that day on, like, me and my brother was just on it, on it, on it. And then they would come from LA to OC. That's when OC started getting cracking. Shout out to Rucky, you feel me? Cause Rucky was bringing the sauce from, from Shad's house down back here. And we was just getting the sauce for him. And then he formed his own little squad and we didn't want to be a part of his squad. So we formed our own little squad. So it was like a little rival in OC. So. Man, it's just a lot. It's just a lot, man. Like I've been dancing with dudes like Swings and Ryan for for many dog, and that's how that's how the foundation uh, came up. Just just hanging around the homies and and being inspired by Crump. Like that's the best. That was the best thing at that time. Wow, man. You know, man. Foundation. Like I always say, y'all dancing the best era of Crump, man. Like man, man. MySpace. Man, what? man, damn, oh that's God. the best era of Crump, man. Now, For me, though. That's the way, like, that time of Crump is when, like, I was, I, I ain't gonna lie, I came into Crump as a fan. I'm not even gonna sit up and act like I came in, like, the man, like, right. I, I, I had somebody that I was looking at, like, dang, like, that's tired, like, you feel what I'm saying? So, like, I came in this game as a fan, and then I just kept my head down, and then and did my shit, did my homework. But became a student, learned the game, and then everybody started digging my style because it was just so different. Um, I honestly feel like the reason for live is because of me. I feel like I'm not gonna say I'm the only one that was doing it, but nobody was doing it like me. You right. feel me? I feel like liveness was just my thing, and I couldn't control it. Like Crump is one of those dances that you just can't control. Feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot of energy, and I feel like that's what people are missing today. You feel me? A lot of energy. So I feel like liveness is my shit. So people used to call me Mr. Liveness, Mr. Incredible. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like just being in this dance alone, man, you'll get so many different names just by being yourself. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Even though you got a big homie or yeah. you got somebody that's mentoring you, because I, I I've never got laughed up by none of my big homies. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like every big homie I had was just a part of my life to teach me some shit. And then once I learned, we just went on our own separate way. We still keep the love, but it, I just learned something different outside of Crump. You feel what I'm saying? So just being in Crump, you learn a whole different type of shit. Just, not just Crump. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Right, so, right, right. Yeah. Man, yeah. that's such dope, man. Hella dope, man. Everybody that's watching, man, y'all take heed to the knowledge that these two brothers is dropping, man. The two legends right here. Your first big homie is Savage, correct? Yeah. Let everybody know, like, how you came to join his family, how you met up with, with the homie Savage. So I met Savage through one of the homies, which is a rider. So he was one of the... Um, the bear, what is the bears that what, that was with Slayer? Slayer would know oh, if he man. watches this. But Dwight was like in a branch of a Slayer. He was a Slayer, but he was with them through the word, right? So that was ministry, the humble ministry. Right, right. And then so I met Sabbath that way. And then so I'm actually, I actually met Sabbath the night I met Slayer. He was with um, Randy. My dog. My dog, right? Uh, Kid Slayer. Slayer. <laughs> Kid Slayer. So, that's how I met Savage. So, I danced, and he thought I was super tight. He was like, I got to pick him up before everybody else finds him. And then that's how I got to meet Savage. Wow, man. So, by you being, you know, originally from Chicago, and you came, when, when was, like, the first time you, like, crumped, like, you actually like, saw really, crump? Yeah. Actually saw it in person? Yeah. Um, Like... Like in a high level, or just people, just other kids doing it. Just regular people getting. Up. Um, for me, I would say 2005, but I didn't get to really see the real shit until six and seven, like the real, real, real shit. When I knew, I was like, okay, I gotta, 
I got more to do. You get what I'm saying? So at that time, it was kind of like clownish. So I was dancing in Hawaii at this point. So we was getting shit late, later than even his his time. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So how I learned was people that came from LA and then like taught me the shit. Cause I was doing like crip walks and clown walks and shit and hella clown shit at first until I heard about Crump and then I got confused with Crump and Bucking at one point. So I thought it was a whole different dance when the term Buck was made. Right, right. But I didn't even know Buck was a term until it was like, he's Buck, meaning he's tight. He's tight. Instead of like, oh, he got a different style. I used to kind of, you know, see it a little bit later than I guess the most people. Right. Had, right. Right. So uh, this question is for both of y'all because um, it's a lot of uh, changes that happen in crump. What's y'all take on people don't like consider the dance crump no more? They say this this is buck. They say it's not crump no more. It's buck. How, how, what's your feeling on like why people consider say like yo this nigga's getting buck now instead of saying like oh it's just crump? I mean, those terms. It's just, those terms are. Like not even to be bring the spiritual side, but I I personally feel that the word buck came from like a spiritual thing because it's, it's it's believing under Christ's kingdom. I feel like that's where buck came from. Versus not not just saying like oh it's an action. I'm just saying like just what it is. You feel me? Like the acronym, like what? what right. So that's what it came when. So book came after K R U M P. Exactly. Which and was not the, just Crump. Right. Exactly. So there was Crump and then K R U M P. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? So it was like Crump is just Crump, but K R U M P is was was the uplifted body of praise. You feel what I'm saying? So people always got confused with the two, but it's the same shit. Like you you Crump however you want to Crump with it. Whatever you believe it is, that's what it is to you. If you want it to believe it under the Christ kingdom, hey, go for it. But make sure it's, make sure it's crumb. Yeah. At the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Make sure you got the bar swings and chest pops and that bang. You feel me? But you can do whatever you want to do with it. Right. You can be butt. Be butt. But make sure you got some crump in it, though. Right. Christ up era. Both of you brothers, you know, experienced that, you know, back in that time. Let everybody know like how it actually was doing that Christ there. Like, or for example, like was you getting off for like repping Jesus, or was you getting off just because it was like the dopest shit to do at the time? Um, <laughs> I did it. I did it because I wanted to be cool. Okay. So, but then, you know, I would like to say almost a lot of people believe in God, obviously. So, um. So I was gonna do it on top of that. Like, okay, cool, it's like, this dance could really save my life then. You get what I'm saying? So that's how I kind of tried to transition to do the shit. But, um, how it was when it was a Christ up era, it was kind of new. So this is when Chaz was still new to the word and he didn't know how to say it, cause he knew he had the influence, I guess. But it was really because from my, from my perception, it was Slayer. I might be wrong though, because I think Slayer was the first one. Yeah, who was the first to one. like bring it into the Slayer was the crunk. He so. was the first one to cut you off. But yeah. Slayer, I, I, what from my understanding, Slayer was the first one to try to make the crunk spiritual. He was the or, or he was the first one to go spiritual with his crunk. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Crunk was the spiritual dance already. I just knew that the shit was hot, and I wanted to do it. And I'm a right. dancer. Cause during when when, dang, I can't believe I forgot the name of that shit. Shake City. It wasn't about that at first. Right, right, right. And see, that's when I was trying to crump because, her to me, that part. it wasn't even Todd Eyes that made me want to dance. No disrespect to Chaz, cause great dancer. But it was actually Hurricane and Tsunami, cause they made me think like, okay, I could look like him then. Cause I'm I'm not I wasn't the very live type of shit like that like. So when Shake City came around, that was, it wasn't KRMP. 
from the likes I know. Right. So. Right. Jay Slop, man, you got one of the most unique and creative dance styles in Crump history, man. Let everybody know, like, how you got in your bag to, like, with the athletic, uh, athleticism, the creativity, you know, the acrobat, like, you wanted, like you said, the livest, man. When you first started getting off, did you, like, did that was, like, already embedded in you or kind of, like, built to that, like, kind of style that you and your brother created um, for Crumps? Shit. One, a nigga got ADHD. So <laughs> I'm going to start it down right there. Like, oh, man. I, I was just start right there. So, I mean, I guess it, 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 it was already in me. You feel me? Like, it was already in me, man. Like, I was a I was a break dancer. And I just, I, I seen that there was break dancers already in Crump. So, I wasn't afraid to break out my shell and try break dancing with my Crump. Because Ruben was doing it. And Ron was doing it. Uh, those people are little tight eyes and soldier tight eyes, if y'all didn't know. Um, they were doing it, and Rowdy, uh, Lil Rowdy, uh, uh, Kid Fresh, um, they were doing it, so I felt comfortable with doing, you feel me, this, everything with my crumb. And me and my brother, we, we, from, we was raised in the South, so there's nothing really to do in the South but do backflips and build go-karts. So the, all, all the acrobat shit, that's where that came from. Oh, wow. So, I, yeah, I, I bust a backflip in, in, in a second, so like, that's where I just and put that with my crump. It's like, you can't stop with just crump. Like, crump is a tool to use to to venture out to whatever other talents you have. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So, if you break dance, if you pop lock, if you, you, you twerk, whatever, make try to make it crump. Make it crump. Like, you make anything crump. You look at wrestling, it's crump. So, what I did was, I just took my style and I elevated it. I, I see crump as energy high energy i'm not about to sit out there and give you a thousand jabs when i can be all over the place right, you know what I'm right, saying? right i want right. to move the crowd i want the crowd to be to, to, to feel me you feel me so i'm right. about to i'm about to give y'all all i got until i can't no more right so that's where my style came from man like i don't feel like my style was taught i feel like my style just, just came with that yeah i agree man i definitely agree now speaking of like Staying on this topic of crump style, how y'all feel about like back then it was like people kind of like created their own style to versus like niggas now just want to like whoever like the dopest dude they want to kind of get off like them. Like, how, how do y'all feel about that? I mean, do you feel like that kind of like uh takes the um originality, originality out of crump, right? All right, well, well let's be real, I, I and I hate to say this, but like sometimes people need harsh reality. Like we're doing something that someone created. If you want to be real, no one has anything originated. Unless it's like totally different from Crumb. Feel what I'm saying? And not too many people have that. There's a select yeah. few, and there are rare people that bring something that's not Crumb into Crumb. You feel what I'm saying? So it's, this is all about what what's unique to you. That's all it's about. What's your take on that, bro? Like within how right well that whole that that whole style within all that when we came in it was you had to be yourself yeah. or you were gonna die like you gonna get pushed out of circles if you're not even remotely tight and I seen that I'm speaking from experience because I came in a different time of my style wasn't as raw and energetic as everybody else is. I'm more stage type of moves. performance. Yeah. yeah, performance. So before there was a generation of that now, I was, I was kind of one of the first. Like I was doing all the hat tricks that you see now and all that like with the whole, I guess, swag crazy because I got swag crazy from Todd Eyes because everyone donned like the swag crown to me, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, some people we think I'm invented it in Crump. There's people that said that. He be hearing that. Obviously, I didn't. But I've I've rolled with how I dance, how I look, and how I dress within all that, and me being myself to the core. Mm -hmm. That's how I carried it with me, and that's why people name me Swag Crazy. Swag Crazy to Style Crazy. Right. 
Wow, man. Damn, this is a lot of crunk history y'all hearing, man. And I be talking hella shit, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so why are you so humble, bro? Like, why don't you, like, you, you very, like, grounded when you just explain, like, when you say, like, oh, niggas, like, say, like, I didn't create that. Like, if that's you, that's you. Like, right. Or you just a cat that just, like, just, like, stay in your own lane. Well, it's because otherwise. there's there's people that was, I would view like me before me. Which was like the Hurricanes and Buck Wilds and Baby C's and Lil Mio's. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't exist because I wouldn't want to kind of dance like a raw, rugged style. Right, so right. when I was under Sabbath, it wasn't working out for me because he, he's such a raw, rugged style. And then, so I didn't really truly evolve that who to who I was at a, as a core until I met Ryan. And then, he showed me how to truly be myself by not even teaching me, like, oh, this is crumb. He didn't teach me this is crumb, but he taught me how to perform certain shit, and then it just eventually went to solo, like, put me from here to, like, here. <laughs> right, right. Took it, like, more, yeah, like, yeah, to yeah, the next yeah, level. Yeah. Jay Slot, man. This brother, like... For everybody that personally knows me and knows like my crump background, like everybody knows like I'm like the number one extreme movement fan. And I want to let everybody know like him, his battle versus Rascal is the main reason why like I like took crump to like serious. Like I got crump tatted on like my arm, arm all that shit, bro. Like, this time. bro, like I will never forget when I, where I watched that, like I was telling y'all upstairs, man, like. Man, man, so extreme movement, bro. That was like I feel like extreme movement put y'all on the map because Crum Kings had their DVDs, right? Mm -hmm. So the cats, like the world, can see like the uh, DVDs and like what just what Koki had and like Chaz and like what they was pushing. But I feel like extreme movement is the first like to put like YouTube on the map as far as Crum. Do you agree with that or? Um, like, what's your take on that? Uh, I would have to disagree. Um, I think if you're talking about during the YouTube, the YouTube days, when I mean, YouTube first like got popular for crunk. I mean, was the D pop? The D's wasn't popping yet, but they had DVD. Had but this yeah. even, you gotta still understand. But even, though, even though we didn't yeah. have YouTube, we still had DVDs. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And they would sell out. So people will still be seen and be popping because of these DVDs. So if you didn't make these DVDs, you just wasn't it right. type shit. So, I mean, Extreme Movement was just extreme. I was a part of Extreme Movement. And I feel like Extreme Movement, I learned the business side yeah. of Crump. You feel what I'm saying? Just like when I was a part of Hall of Fame, I learned the business side of Crump. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like everything that I've done in Crump, I feel like it was a purpose. It wasn't just for no reason. Because with Extreme Movement, I don't feel like they gave me any exposure. I feel like they just they just made me enhance my business moves. My business moves. Because I was on beats. So I would make beats for Extreme Movement. Of course. They would course. I would make uh albums for them to take overseas and sell. You feel me? So I feel like with the business side, I learned from Extreme Movement and that's what I got from Extreme Movement. Mm -hmm. I don't I wouldn't say exposure because other people were getting exposed. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was kind of like with Crump King. It was like, out, it, like in, in Crump Kings, like, they pushed a certain amount of people. Even though you were on the site, like, a certain amount of people will get pushed out. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that, I don't, that, that dynamic was with Extreme Movement. Certain people was getting pushed out and not the people that, that's been there. You feel what I'm saying? Right, so, right. I mean, as far as exposure, I gotta disagree, but as far as the business side, I learned a lot for extra movement, for sure. Well, I wanna piggyback off that also. So say for us like people like myself who's not, you know, originally from the Mecca, if we couldn't get those DVDs, YouTube was like our like version of that's DVDs. Right. So that's why I was kinda of like saying like I feel like the extreme movement, like when I was going on like the computer and like when I typed in crump like Stream Movement was the first shit that I've seen. Right. So like like going back to like you and Rascal's battles. So it was like outside of the Mecca, like like the DVDs was um Not wasn't true. really like available to us until Koki started like making it 
or uh, available to order on uh, yeah. online. Yeah, but wow, man, this is dope, man. Crazy shit, man. <laughs> Crazy shit. So, question for both of y'all. Crump is like um, originally from the Mecca. Like, when did you feel like Crump got outside of like California to where like everybody wanted to start to get it off worldwide? Whether it was overseas, Texas, New York, you know, like et cetera, et cetera. Like, when do y'all feel like Crump? Like, I feel like Crump went overseas when when Rise dropped. Like, right when Rise dropped, that's what I feel like. Crump was like worldwide, even regardless if people were black or or tight, like Rise was just the biggest, like the biggest thing. Because they was they was dropping weird, like dumb dance movies that people didn't like. But when the Crump and Clowning and then like the heart of LA was like displayed, I feel like the world the world was like, damn, they really, like, Crump is really serious. Because I feel like Crump was, like, a joke at first. Mm -hmm. Like, people see you do it, and they be like, yeah. they be like, make like what are y'all doing? Y'all look like y'all having seizures. Don't get me wrong, they'll still do that kind of, yeah. but it's more respected now than it was back then. Right, right. So when sure. Rise dropped and hit the big screen, it was like, oh, damn, y'all Crump? Oh, now, let's do it. Because now it's on the big screen. And I kind of feel like that's when the whole world, world kind of shifted, like, if they see something, oh, we're gonna gravitate to that. Mm -hmm. So that's when everything just dropped with Crump, DVDs, YouTube, like. That's what you're saying, it went global though, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So I, what I think that is when, when Grisha came over there and he was tight, that's what impressed me. Cause like, he's an overseas dancer, he's from Paris, right? It was during SK day, so it was like 2009 and 10. When he came out here, performed very well. I was like, man, Crump is bigger than it is now. Cause I didn't get to really get to engage to see who was really tight at the time until they came out here. That's all I cared about, if you tied out here. And when he came out here tight, that's when I was like, okay. Now there's more Crumpers out there. That's one of the best people we have now is overseas people. Yeah, I agree. So Overseas is pushing Crump like yeah. Crazy man, for what they got over there, I man. And one thing I like about overseas, they real they stick together. It's you know, yeah. it's not like how it is. <laughs> where you know what I'm saying, like over there is like they really like locked in, like for sure. Each whatever part, whatever section you're in, Russia, whatever, like. And that's and that's how and that's why I feel like overseas will have longevity if the mecca where it started don't come together. Cause it's crazy how much love we get overseas versus how much love we get here. Like it originated here. So our sessions should be more supported. The community should be more supported because it started right here. It's like in our, in our own backyard, it's like our own parties. Like you can go to work all week, but that one day, oh, I'm about to have a party because I don't want it. It's about to be a cypher, it's about to be a session. Everybody that I know about to be there. Mm -hmm. So everybody should be pulling up. I know we got lives, but they got lives in overseas. Mm -hmm. They, I don't, I don't want to say they living the life, but I'm pretty sure they not living the best life, but they still got the best community. Feel what I'm saying? And that's crazy how something that started over here don't get that much love. Anybody from over here go over there, touch soil over there, they gonna treat you like you Jay Z because they appreciate where it originated. They appreciate the people that put the time in. They appreciate all the blood, sweat, and tears. The fallen soldiers that we just lost in this dance. Like they appreciate that type of shit. So it's like, of course overseas gonna be popping. If I could live over there, I would, because it's, it's like, damn, the crow scene is how it was when it first started over here. Mm -hmm. Anybody that ever been to overseas know I'm not lying. If like that first feeling, when you first crump, ever, when you go over there, you feel that shit. It and looks it, like that in the footage. It's crazy. I personally, it's I think crazy. before like the right. corner session came about, honestly, and I think you know, thankfully that that came out. You know what I'm saying? But 
It was the EBSs, right? That's what they call it. Right? Mm -hmm. the that was the littest, the like, EBS. anything in terms of crumb. You know, I, and I messed with that, but it kind of didn't sit well with me because it's like, dang, how come we can't have that? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. just, like, because he, he could tell you, shoot, he, he danced in there, but he told me that it's smaller than it looks in there, but the crowd make it look bigger than what it is, though. That's what's crazy about it. He said it's what, what? I didn't want to break the sick, but I'm telling you, bro, it was like our events are huge. And there's not even that many people. Their events are small. And there are so many fucking people in there. And it's not even dancers, bro. It's people supporting the movement. Because the dancers are so together. Right, right. So it's like unity brings numbers. Like why would somebody come to a, a community where it's contaminated? Like what kind of unity is that? They don't feel safe. They don't feel like home. Yeah. But you got people that are, you got like 50 dancers and then like 120 people on the stands, bro. But these 50 dancers are together. These 25 dancers or 30 dancers are together organizing this damn event. But they got 150 people on the stands, bro. Because the, the dancers are so together, and the, the community see, the community see that they believe in something. Yeah. So they go support it. They go support it, and that's why it's no support here because there's so much greed and, and, and hunger and just betrayal. Niggas don't want to work together, and and we'll never get that community. We're not yeah. talking about the dance community. We're talking about that community. Like that's the the community we want to save too. Right. Don't just worry about. The crumb community we want to save that community out there too because mm -hmm. i was out there i was that community and it brought me into here so like why we gotta just worry about here we gotta worry about that community too so that's why i say man overseas is cracking because they got the they got the home the love is the man. love is yeah man love i hear so much about it and uh like was slamming all them when you see like them posting footage you be like feel like like you said like it's at an arena but hearing from you i didn't know it was that that small man and you said it's just they wow, make it man. like that because the because the energy, the the, the, the people, like the, the just it's just different there, bro. It just it's so many people make a little ass room look big. Ain't the seats raised a little bit? Like not they're, 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 they're raised, like, but like like everything is level. It's, it's, it's raised, but it's not like stadium. It's it's just level, bro. But it's just so many people that support it. And make it look like you at the fucking Super Bowl. I promise you, it was people. It was people in line getting food. It was people in the stands. It was people coming in, getting to their chairs, and then all the dancers were on the floor, laughing, talking, communing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, once the community see that, then they'll start believing they want to put money in here, bro. Unless it's, if they keep doing this, it's gonna keep up being like this. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow, man. And that's so that's so alarming because like their events being so cracking shows growth in Crump, and then us not having the same type of thing shows that we didn't even move at all. At all. You know what I mean? Like that's. Or we're not moving. Just, or we're not right. moving. The world's not turning. How how do y'all both feel about Chaz uh, creating like Crump 2.0? I mean, which where? Hey. What's Crump 2.0? Hey, hey, the DVD? No, nah, actually, I, I guess. It's, I guess it's like a new style. Or honestly, I just want. I'm, I'm gonna say this, and then I'm gonna leave it at this. <laughs> is nah. it a DVD or what? It, it, it's, it's the new, it's like a new style. It's like a new it's style. style. It's, new style. It's, it's like how like how Crump and then KRUMP was pretty much. Right, but, but he's saying cool. it's 2.0. Crump 2.0. I'm gonna okay. just. I'm I need gonna, more context to it, so. I I. It, I respect whatever that man is doing. He do what he got to do for himself. Because at the end of the day, you got to make self happy. Right. You can't make the world happy if self not happy. So whatever he's doing to make himself happy, if it's 2.0, 3.0, 7.0, <laughs> happy. Right, right, right. Exactly. So you're not familiar with it then? Nah, This is the first time, like, kind of like. As we speak about it right all now. All right, all right. Now y'all both been, you know, in crook forever, man. Like I said, legends. Let's talk about some of y'all like historic battles that y'all had. Name a few dope battles that you feel like, like was like, like statue of like your crump history. Well, I, I battled the legends, but it was never on stage. So I battled 
Lil C before I battled T Fly, I battled Chaz, I battled Neo, I battled Crush. Um, but mostly, like, why people fucked with me at the end of the day was what I was doing in my battle. So I would say my battles was kind of overrated because of what I was doing that was tight. And not a lot of people even want to battle me in the first place. Like, some people was like, damn, they're stupid. But I've only, I battled like Jay Ruck, and that's what got me to travel um, in Virginia and toured with Chez and Enforcer and B Dash. Yeah, RP to the home. Yeah, RP. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, it's J Ruck. I battled. I battled Mad Hatter. But those were never on DVD, and I don't even want to get that going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't got to tap it. Man, I'm such yeah. a hidden gem. Whoever watching this, my, a lot of my shit ain't on footage. And I've done killers that. Talk your shit. Man, that people do now. I'm, man, I'm, I could be on my soldier boy shit. I don't want to, though. I be trying to be cool. Yeah, but you know what I mean? I did a lot of shit people do now, though. Right. I man, do. that whole footage, man, I keep hearing this some crazy shit, man. But what about you, Jay? Like, name some of your, uh, like, iconic battles that you had in your career. I'm going to say, uh, the reason why people was fucking with me, shit, because I'm a slaughter. I'm just playing. Nah, I think my battle would set me off as well. I battled Baby C at Cage 2. Cage 2, yeah. yeah. Cage 2. That's what set me off. I was an yeah. underdog, always been an underdog, but I always busting ass out there. Every time they put me up against an opponent, I do what I gotta do, man. And I, and I come out, number one. But uh, they put me up against Baby C, an OG that I respect, my dog. Um, they put me against Baby C, and it, I was, I was spooked. I was like, cause y'all understand, man. At that time, when OGs like Baby C was dancing, you had to sit on the on the sideline and watch Crump like this, right? Because they not letting you in that circle, cause you ain't got enough history, you ain't got enough paperwork, you ain't got no car facts. Nah. If I ain't got no paperwork on you, who are you? So I'm like. But me and my brother set off cage, man. We set the cage, cage two off, man. My brother had one of the most historical moments in cage two. And then the other, the uh, next cage, that yeah, yeah, cage like, also. Yep. come on, man. The Slaughter Brothers are always doing their job, man. People be thinking we underdogs, man, but we here, bro. We here, always been here. But cage two set me off, battle, uh, battle the bro, did my thing. And then uh, my rival, my, my dog, I love him to death, foolish. At the dunamis, they will always put us against each other. Every every time in the tournament, it was me and Foolish, always. J Slot versus Foolish, J Slot versus Foolish. That's my dog, man. So people know me from Dallas. I was one of the tightest at that time, and Dunamis it was always it was it was like a tournament. It was always and on top of that, Foolish had his own tracks though, so oh, he God. controlled his own narrative. He controlled the. That's why Foolish is one. Of the he won the ones. Let y'all know he he J two. He one of the ones, all right. And then another battle, um, y'all already know Chris Brown. I battled Chris Brown at the D, you know. I was actually supposed to battle J Tight, uh, Rich Boykin. I was supposed to battle him that night, but he showed up late, and Chris Brown was Damn, there that's what with Lil Miho, with Barry, and they was like, "You want to dance, Chris?" And I'm like, "Y'all want me to battle this nigga?" Are you serious? Hey, but no one deserved that battle more than you around that time. Not in my opinion. So I'm glad it was you. For sure. It had to be you. Hey, oh God. And I feel like I did. I represented Crump. Not just myself, but I feel like I represented Crump in a a well respected manner. I did my shit. You had to to battle against his hat falling and the girl was tripping when she she got what? I'm like, yo. He just looked at a girl, <laughs> blinked at her, nigga. She started shaking, nigga. I'm like, I got to go get this, though, nigga. Man. What? Respect. Now, was, <laughs> that, was that Stomp the Yard, Chris Brown, or before them? Uh, that was after. And that's a good question, that actually. Before. That was before. That, that's when he was when he was first, when he was. It was before. It was, yeah. it was way before. That's when Chris Brown was first new. He started, uh, Crush went on tour with him. Right. And actually brought him down to Orange County and yeah. So he was he was just new. He was just working on his uh 
first album. His first album, that's when he was, that's when he came to the session. But after that, shit, he did stuff the yard and he was crumb master after that shit. After he got that woman, I set him straight. He was like, I'm crumb master after that shit. Yeah, man. Like the movie Stump the Yard, as far as like people outside the Mecca, like when you bring up Crump, like that's the first movie that they say, oh, the dance that Chris Brown was doing. I'm like, I be looking at people like, hell no. I'm like, nigga, that's a dance like I rascal like. And they be like, who is that? And I'll be like, like with my girl, she don't really not familiar with Crump. So I have to be like, yo, go watch Stump the Yard in the beginning and you'll see like get a familiarity with it. But yo, man, Crump is like traveled and like elevated in so much levels. I'm just happy to be like part of it. And we're sitting, you know, at this table with you, brothers, man. This shit is dope, man. Y'all both was part of the, one of the coldest creations ever in Crump, man. Foundation. Mm. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's talk about it, man. I feel like Foundation was the one, man. Foundation. I feel like we was the most loved and most hated at the same time. Yeah. Like everybody loved us, but they hated us because they just wasn't us. Like we were just so free and like we did whatever we want, but we played by the rules, but we did what we want. We had a solo, we had a grim, we had niggas like Riot, we had niggas like Jeff, we had niggas like myself, like we had everybody. We were so guys. We had Casper, we had Boy Cash, like Bad News, Bad News, Bad News, J Bad, I think Flash was Dacian, like Flash. Like just think of Every presentation, rampage, like just think of every style, and just put it in one group. Like we had everybody, we had everybody. And at that time, man, there was so many groups. Like you had like mob, right. every, everything, man. Like let everybody know, like what was the difference from y'all crew to like supposed to, to like like a mob or crump kings? Even though y'all each had members from like right, right, like you know what I'm saying, like each little. I would I would say because Foundation was the most diverse in terms of dancing styles, because mm -hmm. Mob was messing with each other and they did all the same shit, which is their own shit though. They yeah, controlled yeah, yeah. the shit. You know what I mean? Underground. You know, everyone tight. You get what I'm saying? I just want to say that first off. But why why I guess why people fuck with us is because we just had so much different styles. Like this was even before. When I was the, I was Solo's little homie, and I was in Foundation way before even he was in Foundation. So he like started fucking with us, cause he know what's up. You know did. what I mean? Yeah. Right, right, right. So. And Solo one of the ones. And Solo definitely one so of the ones. Like, what? What do you? What do you expect? Like, yeah. you see some hot shit. Show with the hot shit. What's up? We joined it up, and I feel like Dacia was just one of those groups that. Uh, like, even though everybody had, like, that whole dynamic of, like, a crew, I just feel like Dacian was more than just a crew. Like, we all grew up with each other. We all know each other's moms. Like, we all, like, like personally know each other. Like, like brother, like, brothership. Like, like I know these dudes. Mm -hmm. Like, I really know these dudes. So, I feel like Dacian was, like, a family. Like, it was really, like, a family. And I reason why I can personally say I agree to that even though I wasn't around because it was this one you know fed event right so it was uh you know crush and swings versus Ruben and uh eyes mm -hmm. then you had Grum jumping in you had jumped in They was on the they was on the T Dang, those are names you'll never get to like kinda hear you just have to be around. Cause, yeah, them some Cause those names are names, but they're not names of to that would be popular to the likes of like. And who 
who's popular now, like to Beast right now, mm -hmm. who's wildly popular. He wouldn't know who Lex is. Because he didn't come at a time of crime. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of people that didn't get a seal. A lot of type oh. people. Oh we're not saying let footage type of thing and that kind of fucked me up because they was the one holding all the shit that I've ever 